right, so I'm going to start pretty close. Because you can start warming up seated. That's the beauty of it. We're going to do what I call my typical warm up. So if you're sitting, you sit up straight. If you're standing, you can do the standing. Don't think you can't. So up tall, and we're just going to look side to side. So if you're sitting, make sure your shoulder blades are back. If you're standing, your shoulder blades are back. Look to your right. And then left. And then right. And then left. Oh, I've got to mute you all. All right, so look up and then down. I'm going to mute you guys, but I'll be back. All right, and then up, and then down. And then the infamous, roll your shoulders up high and around. Really think of when they're coming up, really squeeze them back. Let's do about five, and I think we've done three. Can everybody hear me okay? Give me a wave. Awesome, thank you. Now forward. Make these big, they're not little choppies. Bring them up around your ears and down. And then we're gonna do this seated again. You can do it standing, but we're gonna do the Y me's. So your hands are down, pull your thumbs to your armpits, turn your thumbs up, and then back to your armpits and back down. I want five. Really think when you come back, look. They come up and squeeze them back. After your five, thumbs down. So up, thumbs down. Whoa. All right, so if you're seated, march. If you're standing, moving my chair out of the way, march. So big high knees. Try to get your knees to your shoulders. Just about five. And then as we saw on the screen, butt kicks. And again, just about five each. And then heel toe rocks, and you can do these seated. So up on your toes, back on your heels. All right, so our next round, I want four minutes of cardio. I want you to just do 60 to 70% of cardio. So it's something you can do for a long time, but you're breathing hard. So if you wanna march and swing your arms, let me get the clock started first and go. So four minutes. If you've got a bike, go ride a bike. If you have a treadmill, get on your treadmill. Run your stairs. Don't run outside the house. You might not make it back. Anything. Up and down the hallway. You could do, if I had steps, I would be doing step ups. If you don't, you can do stepping lunges or driver lunges. Driver lunges are fantastic. But I want four minutes because I need to breathe it. Because then what we're gonna do is really hit the floor and hit it with a lot of work. So you'll see me doing a sundry of things, butt kicks, love butt kicks. Swing your arms with your butt kicks. Here, because big movements are gonna get your heart rate up. Sit to stand. So you can sit down and stand up and put your arms up over your head. Make these count. I want you breathing. There's one down, two to go. You can go side to side. Rotation is beautiful. Works your core. You can do anything you want. You have got, I'm checking the clock, I'm not so good with that. If you're sitting, give me arm circles. 
Again, you can do big arm circles. Do arm circles with marching. Alternate them. Because you've got two down, two to go. And then switch directions. I need you breathing today. Brain work, we're gonna hit more balance and core. The core is also gonna be posture. Woohoo! You're more than halfway done. And again, it may seem like a long time. <clears throat> it's not that long. And guess I'm doing it. And I just switch what I gotta do just to get my four minutes in. Say bye, Zid. Goodbye, guys. I know he can't hear you, but it's a thought that counts. No, he can hear. Oh, he can't hear. Everybody wave. They can <laughs> see the clock. Oh, or hi, see darling. The camera. I see you all waving. Yeah. <laughs> see them all. One minute left. One minute. You can do anything for a minute, whatever you can do for one minute. So squats, arms up. That's one thing you can do. These are awesome. Big movements, big muscle group. Anytime you get your hands over your head. Whoops. We are almost there. I think about 30 seconds left. Don't count me on a clock. But I want you breathing. You can hear me breathing. I can talk, but I know my heart rate's up. And again, big movements. 10 seconds. And again, don't ever count me with a clock. <laughs> All right, so grab a drink of water, please. Get your light weights, um, <clears throat> two to five pounds, can of soup. Brick's a little heavy, but if you want a brick, use a brick. I'm using twos for this. And you're going to want to be on the floor, so if you need a mat, get a mat. Whew. Because luckily, our rep count is only 10 today. <laughs> Twice. So, when you're ready, everybody's going to be on the floor. So get your, your phones, your iPads, whatever. Probably should adjust the light. Two seconds, I'm disappearing. I can't get them to go down. Ah, all right, Abed. Can you see me okay? I'll kind of do it against the whiteboard, which will help. So I want you on your left side. Your weight is going to be in your right hand. I'm going to look very tiny. What you're going to do is you're going to be in a side plank. So you can stagger your feet. You can be on your knees. I will show a modified seated version. Let me get a chair in here. You can do them against the wall. So what you're doing, and you're only doing 10. If you're on the floor, make sure your elbow's under your shoulder. You're gonna lift up, and then the weight's gonna go up and back down. So if you can see it from this angle, I'm up, up, and down. You have 10. You can do this on a chair, lean against the chair. Pull the weight up and make sure that weight goes parallel to your body, actually in line with your body. Sorry, perpendicular. Never was good at geometry. So when you've got your 10 in, do not roll over. So when I've done my 10, I'm just gonna stay right here, drop my head down, and do leg ups. So here. Now, if you're leaning on a chair to do this, lift one leg. So you're still turned sideways, but just lift one leg. Again, you only have 10. Whew. 
Then you're gonna do it all on the other side. So, I will lay on my right side. I will stagger my feet. My shoulder is underneath my elbow. I'm gonna hold my hips up, up and down with the weight. You can do this on your knees to modify it. You can lean against the wall. If I were to lean on the wall, I can still get it in. You're gonna do 10 of these and then 10 leg ups. I like the wall. And then leg up, same thing. I'm down, lift both legs up. When you have 10 in, let's just stay on this side. Modifications, I'll show you various. You're gonna do the one arm push up. So you're up in a plank position. I'm on my right side, my left hand is by my right hand, and I'm just rolling over, pushing back up. You can do this on your knees. You can do this on your all fours. Actually down to one elbow, push and up. You have 10. And then just roll over and do 10 on the other side. Modification. If I want to be in a chair and I'm able to do this or if I need to be on my knees, I push and up, push and up against the wall. I'll show you from this side. Push, up. I want 10. You're doing 10 both sides. Then we have one more exercise on the floor or wall. So go ahead and make sure you finish these up. And then all you have is a plank tap. You can do it on your elbows. You can do it on your hands. But you're up in a plank, you're tapping your foot out and in. What I'd like you to see, my hands are under my shoulders, not my nose, tapping in and out. You have 10 each side. If you need to take a break, please take one. <clears throat> when you get done, Hopefully your water is close to you. You will need a drink. And I'm giving you a minute break. Not quite a minute, about 30 seconds. Because then we're gonna do it all again. So get a drink, wipe your face. It was tough. And then in about 25 seconds, we're gonna repeat that whole process. So the side plank lift, leg ups, other side plank lift, leg ups, the one arm push ups, and the plank taps. Whew, I'm getting a drink, I'll disappear for a minute. Whew. All right, we are back. And again, all on the same side. I'm going to start on my left side instead of my right this time, just so you can see me from the front. Shoulders through, or over top of my elbow. My feet are staggered. That light weight, holding my hips up, up and down. And I only have 10 a side. And I can't count very well, but for me, that's 10. Then I'm gonna come right down. And leg ups. Then I get to roll over and do it all again. 
So I will switch sides for you. And hold up and then lift and up. Ten. So we're just repeating our earlier work. Side ups and leg ups. And again, if you're doing this against a chair, you can lean on the chair and just lift one leg. Oh, phew. Welcome back to boot camp, everybody. Now you have the one arm push ups. So I'm kind of going fast, I know, but you get a break after this. So, one arm push ups. I'm in a plank. I can do them on a knee, I can do them against the wall. Push and up. Push and up. Most of my weight is on the elbow under my right shoulder. This will help you get up from anywhere. It helps you get out of bed. Ugh. Never said it was easy. And then you're just gonna flip to the other side. Stay on my feet. And just 10, down and up. Again, you can do these against the wall. Don't think you can't. If you do it against the wall, I'm leaning into the wall at an angle, rolling over and pushing up. You are still gonna work that muscle through. You're still gonna get strong. It's still gonna help you get out of bed. Whew, get up off the floor from wherever you are. When you've got your 10 in, plank tap. You can do that against the chair, against the wall. I'll show you against the wall. Here, plank position, tap it out. Then you'll do the other side. Any way you get these in, you're still engaging your core. You're engaging all those muscles. As you finish up, then again, get a drink, get a towel. This time you get a minute break because we're going right into another round of cardio. You will need weights for this round of cardio. You can use your moderate weights. Um, I'm going to grab my tens. I'm feeling a little saucy today. But you've got time yet. Get a drink. Grab your, you know, five, eight, ten pound weights. You're going to do bicep curls. And my famous, famous, everybody loves them, man makers. So I'm going to show you modifications now before we start. So guys that are in chairs, you can do this against the kitchen counter. Against the wall, man makers on the wall. We're not there yet, but I'm just prepping to show you here. You're in a push-up position, lift one hand, lift the other hand. Against the chair, if you wanna do it against the chair, you're able to use a weight. Get in your plank position, pull that weight wide. See how wide it is, it is basically even with my chest. I'm not doing a rub. <sighs> These are gonna be tough you've got 30 seconds of each exercise and 30 seconds off. All right. So our first exercise is squat with bicep curl. Everything goes. We're gonna do 30 seconds of it, get a 30 second break, then you're gonna get to the floor and do your man makers. So chairs, sit to stand with a bicep curl. We've got a few seconds yet because if I don't start the clock in the right place, you guys will do these for a long time. So get your weights. Get ready to sit to stand or squat and go. Down and up. So from the side, you notice my head stays above my butt. You guys can stand in bicep curl. This is the easy part of this 30 seconds. So again, the other side. We're almost there. Make sure you do the full range of motion. Don't shorten your movements. 
and that's time. You get 30 seconds. Man makers, you are in a push-up position. You can do half on one side, half on the other side. I'll tell you the halfway point. I've got to watch the clock. The key to this is make sure you're in a nice plank or a modified plank. And three, two, one, go. Man makers, lift, lift. 30 seconds of this is an extremely long time. Don't be afraid to drop to your knees a little bit if you need to. Again, you're still working your core. You are halfway done, so you can switch sides if you're doing one side at a time. Good. Yeah, I had to drop to modified. Oh. And you're done. Whew. We get to do that again. So two simple, oh, they're not simple. Straightforward, thank you, Mary, exercises. So we're going back to our squats with a bicep curl. Oh, I gotta watch my clock or you'll do these for a long time. And go, squat with a bicep curl. Your full range of motion all the way up, all the way down. Chairs, sit to stand with a bicep curl. Make this as big a range of motion as you can make it. We don't want short and choppy, you're halfway done. Oh, we've got about five seconds left. All right, you're done. You know what's next. The infamous man makers. I'm gonna make sure I can see my clock. You have time yet, you got about 20 seconds. Get a drink, get a towel, whatever you need to do. And then on the floor. We'll get these done and we have no more man makers today. Three, two, go. I will let you know at the halfway point. You notice that you probably cannot see my feet are wide apart. You are halfway. I am not doing a race. Oh, this is gonna wear me out. This definitely will get your heart rate up. And that's time. I'm giving you a minute. You're gonna need your weights for the next round. During this minute, walk around. If you're going to walk, practice your perfect walking. Swing your arms, heel strike. Your brain is full of fuel. Now, teach it very, very good habits. Really work. If you're seated, you can do march and swing your arms. Make sure it's opposite arm, opposite leg. I want your heart rate down just a little bit. I don't know about you all, but that got my heart rate up. And then we're going to do another round of weights. Because again, we haven't done weights in a while. It's time to bring weights back into the game. Don't be afraid to use tomato cans, soup cans. Bricks, David loves his bricks. If you have weights, you can use them. Um, anything that has a little bit of weight, jugs, jug of water. Oh, the one I had here was gone. So even bottled water, if you can use those, that's weight. All right, so our next round, I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do. I will show you, and this is again, very, very straightforward and simple. So, all kinds of modifications, but everybody knows what a one-arm row is. I'm gonna get up close. I'm gonna do mine in a tandem stance. Notice where my elbow is. Now, I want that little bit of a twist at the top, 
and then back down and twist at the top. Um, give me 10 of these, 10 each arm. So I'm doing mine in a tandem stance. You can do it leaning on a chair against the coffee table, against the counter. Add that little twist. So as I pull it up, I'm twisting my body a little bit. Doing it this way works on your balance, engages your core. Leaning against a chair, you're still getting your exercise because you're still working the muscle group. And again, you only have 10, then you're gonna switch legs. Here and row. You guys look good. Don't forget to add that little bit of twist. Twist. Wow. I don't know how many I've done, so I'm gonna do three more because we know how well I count. One, two, three. Whew. All right, next is one of my favorites. You can use a weight or not use a weight. I love Bob and Robbins. You can put opposite weight to opposite leg. I like same side, don't ask me why. But weight's in my right hand. I'm gonna use my right foot. And I'm going to down and up. My foot comes down when I come back up. If you don't have a weight, I want you to do a reach. So if you have a chair, coffee table, the wall, reach out, touch, stand up. Make sure you come up straight. Get as low as you can. This is a hard balance move. And especially with weight, you're engaging your core. You're working your hamstring. Obviously working your balance. Now, my right toes don't need to be clenched. If I clench my toes, it's harder to do this move. Make sure when you bend, you bend at your hips not your back, so I'm not going, I want nice and tall. I think I've done 10 on that leg, whoops. Switch sides. And again, challenge yourself, down and up. Make sure you stand all the way up between each move. All right, you guys are gonna see my nose. I'm checking. Guys look good. Flat backs, I wanna see the flat backs. Make sure you stand all the way up. Don't shorten those movements. Tim looks good. Merlane, try and squeeze your shoulder blades through the movement. Ha! Huh? <laughs> so keep your shoulder blades squeezed and then stand up. That's it, that's beautiful. You too, Brenda. Other than that, you're perfect. Try and keep your shoulder blades squeezed. I'm sure you've probably gotten your 10 in. That was nice. Thank you for letting me see you. All right, we're gonna go right on back. Again, everything is two sets of 10 today. So you've got the one arm row with a twist. Um, Steve, if you have a band, you can use a band and pull it. But again, one arm row. Add that little bit of twist. Add that little bit of twist. That is for rotation. That rotation you need to have again. If your pelvis can rotate and your back can rotate, you look so much better walking. And again, I'm not counting. That's not unusual for me. But I know I'm working today. So I'm gonna call that 10 and switch. Again, you can do this leaning on the kitchen counter. You can do this leaning on a chair. If all else fails, get on all fours. You can do it that way. Make sure that elbow gets as far past your body as it'll go. So here, you notice I'm rotating. I can see you all. I think three more for me. Again, I'm the world's best counter. <laughs> if you need a break, 
do not hesitate to take a break and get a drink because Bob and Robbins are next. This is not a speed drill. These should take you a while. So as you do your Bob and Robin, go down to, whoops, see, there's my balance, flat back. And all the way up. Make sure when you come up, squeeze your bum. Squeeze your bum. You only have 10, only. And up. If you do not have a weight, reach. And stand all the way up. Both feet come down. Reach all the way up. I think you're going to know you went to boot camp today. I hope so. I don't know how many more I've got. So I'll do one more and I will switch sides. Oh. And again, you can have the weight in your opposite hand. You can have it in the same hand as the foot that's on the floor there. You saw my balance go crazy. I can tell I'm getting tired. So when you are fatigued and this is hard, slow it down. If you notice, I'm not going all the way to the floor. That's okay. My back is staying hoo, 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 flat and up. Don't forget to breathe. And again, so you can see me. Ah, uh, one more sounds good to me. Okay, you will need your weights. I'm giving you a minute. I need you to get a drink. Wipe yourself off. Stretch a little bit if you need to stretch. Because when you come back, we've only got an easy cardio. So we're going to do a 30 by 30, but it's going to be easy movements. It's going to get your heart rate up a little bit. So we're not doing 80 or 100%, 60 to 70%. I'm getting a drink. You're probably going to see more of me than you need. <sighs> Okay. Oh my, just a few more seconds. And this round of cardio, I'll tell you what, we're gonna make it a purposeful round of cardio. So you're gonna have 30 seconds of high knees, 30 seconds of butt kicks, and 30 seconds of squats, not fast. Again, I want you 50, uh, 60 to 70% again, like you did in the beginning. And we're not taking a break in between these. We're just gonna keep right on going. So let me get to a good spot on my clock. So you got five seconds, four, and we're gonna do high knees first, and I want you to swing your arms, go. High knees. Again, just high knees, make it wide. You don't have to have one foot in front of the other. You can make this wide. I want you breathing. I want you able to talk to me. We're halfway done. If you're doing same side, switch. Turn around, do circles. Might as well have fun with it. And two, one, we're going into butt kicks. Swing your arms and butt kicks. Again, you can make this big. You notice I'm not doing them fast. I'm trying to do them clean. I want my heart rate up, but I don't want to be Breathing really, really, really hard. When you do butt kicks, you shouldn't see the knee doesn't come in front. So it's not this. My knee's way back behind me. Then we're going right into squats. So squats, down and up. I don't want these fast. I want a great big range of motion. So if you can see me here, I'm trying to get my elbows to my knees and up. Again, this is all about range of motion. People in chairs, sit to stand. It's not for speed. When you squat, your head stays above your bum. So here is not a squat. Oh, that's time, take a break. We did those a little longer than we should have. You're gonna need your weights and you're gonna be on the floor. 
So I'm gonna use my 10 pound weights because that's what I have. So your heavier weights, we're gonna be doing a chest press, an overhead pull, and a one leg bridge with the weight on my hips. So let me show you. Let me get where you can see me. If you are in a chair, I want you to lean back. So let me show you a quick chair. Lean back in your chair, head up, notice how far back, chest press. That's gonna be your chest press. Your overhead pull, you're still leaning back in your chair, take it as far back as you can. Bring it to just below your chin. Overhead pull, bridges. I'll have you do sit to stand, holding the weights against your hip. So on the floor, let's see, let's do it this way. Everybody's familiar with the chest press. So your elbows are shoulder height, and all I wanna do is push them straight up. That's all I'm doing, make sure my back stays on the floor. So I want 10 of these. 10, you can use both weights. If you're feeling really strong, you can use both weights to do an overhead pull. You can drop to one weight, I don't care which. Then your one leg bridge. So I'm gonna put the weight on my right hip bone, hold my right leg up and lift up and down. I do not wanna see your pelvis tilt. All right, so when we're ready, let's start with chest press and I want 10. Full range of motion, all the way till your elbows hit. Your elbows are shoulder height, they're just below. This is not a speed drill. Make sure you push it all the way out so your arms are straight. So I think that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I'm gonna use both of my weights. If you don't want to drop a weight for my overhead pull, so I put my weights together, just below my chin, take them over my head. You notice my arms are straight, but they're not locked out. I still have a soft elbow, and then I pick it up off the floor and bring it right to below my chin. This is a wonderful posture strengthener. It works your lats and lower traps. Oh, you get a little tricep in there too. Make sure your low back stays on the floor throughout all of this. So if you need to engage your belly, suck your belly in, but don't hold your breath. I think I have three more. Again, we know I cannot count, never have. Because when I got done with my three, I'm going right into a one leg bridge. Oh. And I'm gonna put one weight down, my right hand on top of my right hip bone, lift my right leg, make sure my left foot is in and flat on the floor and lift up and down. I'm trying to keep my pelvis level so I don't want it to tilt to one side. Just up and down. Try not to brace with your opposite hand. If you need to, that's fine. Your hamstrings are gonna know you've been here today. Two more. And then we're just gonna switch sides. So that weight's gonna sit on top of my left hip bone. My left leg's in the air and up and down for 10. You are engaging a lot of core to keep that pelvis level. And I'm sure the hamstring is doing a lot of work. I think I have that as five. Eight, nine, 10. Guess what, ladies and gents? Round two of the same thing. Chest press. Overhead pull, one leg bridge, but I want you to take just a little bit of time. If you need to stretch, stretch it out. Seated, same thing. Let me show you seated. Again, it's leaning in the chair, doing a chest press, overhead pull from your chair. Whew. 
Yeah, today we're gonna know we've been here. So are we ready for round two? This time I'll turn in opposite direction just because I can. And hopefully you can see. Going back to chest press. I'm keeping my knees bent so my low back stays on the floor. And push all the way up and down and up. If you don't have weights, you can do push-ups on the wall. You can do push-ups in your chair. You can do push-ups on the floor. I like these better just for the simple fact I find them easier for me. I think I have three more. One, talking I don't count well. And then I'm gonna go right into overhead pulls. So I'm using both my weights. You can use just one weight. And it goes all the way over till I touch the floor. If you notice, I really try to tilt my pelvis to keep my low back on the floor. And then pull them up to about the center of my chest or the weights below my chin. This is not something you wanna hurry through. If any of this hurts, lose the weight. You can do a little bit smaller range of motion if you need to. Weight should not hurt. Should you be fatigued? Yes, you should. Should your muscles be getting tired? Boy, I hope so. Your tremor may get worse, oh, but then you will notice it gets better. Fatiguing that muscle helps your tremor. Do I know why exactly? I do not, but I've seen it work. Oh, I think I have one more. Ugh. These are getting heavy, folks. Right hand, right hip, right leg. Up and down for 10. We are almost there. Notice I'm trying to get as high up as I can. That really engages this glute. Strong bum, strong legs. You will always be able to get off the potty by yourself. I always call these, you know, the squats or the potty exercise, but I believe in working legs and mobility, balance. As long as you can walk, walking is an amazing thing. And right now, since we don't have a gym, that is a great exercise to do. Because that does help your balance. I have switched sides. It gets you outside in the fresh air. Although here today it's kind of rainy. Try not to use the opposite hand to brace. That makes you engage your core a lot more. Uh, two more. Get a drink if you need one. Wow. Because what I want to do while we're down here is do a little bit of stretching since we work that backside really a lot. So if you're on the floor, I want you to grab your knees and pull them into your chest. Here, pull them in. Oh, try and grab behind the knee instead of squishing them in. It's just safer for your knee joint. Now, while you've got a hold of your knees, breathe, do not hold your breath. It doesn't matter if they're farther apart, if they're in really close, farther apart, I breathe easier. Now, I'm gonna straighten my right leg all the way to the floor. So I've got a hold of my left leg behind the knee. And I'm gonna direct that left knee a little bit toward my right shoulder. Oh, wow, do I feel that? I should feel it right here. If you feel a pinch in your groin, let your knee go out a little bit and then pull it over. So it doesn't have to be so squished in. A Little bit bigger gap here and then pull it across a little bit. This is for the bum. We just worked very, very hard. Now, straighten your left leg. Now, when that left leg is straight, try and keep your toes up. 
pull your right knee in. So you're grabbing behind your right knee. If you're in a chair, you can do this. Just pull that knee up. Now, I'm gonna take that right knee and direct it a little bit toward my left shoulder. And again, you should feel it in your outer right hip. Feels amazing. Make sure you're not holding your breath. Oh. Now, straighten your right leg all the way out. And then those that can, roll up, grab your toes. Now, if you cannot grab your toes, just sit up as straight as you can with your legs straight out. So from this side, my legs are straight out and I'm sitting up straight. If I need to lean back a little bit, that's fine. What we're doing is stretching the back side of your legs. In a chair, scoot to the edge of your chair, lock your knees out as straight as you can get them. I want you to feel it all the way back up that leg. I'm lucky enough, I have monkey arms and I can reach my toes. But I am not bent this way. I'm still up nice and tall. I am pulling my toes back because that get, gets my calves. Wow. I think I wore myself out. Again, continue to hold this for a little bit. We did a lot of posterior leg and glute and back work. We need them stretched. So, and since I have you on the floor, I'm gonna take my right leg and I'm crossing my right foot over my left knee. In a chair, cross your legs, or if you can pull it up and sit this way in a chair, that's fine. My left hand is gonna grab my right knee. My right hand's going behind me, and I am rotating around. So in a chair, grab your right hand's gonna grab the back of your chair. Look over your right shoulder, get a big twist. Big, big, big twist. This one sometimes will crack my back. To me, it feels good. Again, it should feel good. You don't want stretching to hurt. It can be a little uncomfortable, but you do not want it to hurt. So now I'm gonna switch legs. I'm straightening my right leg, my left leg. I'm crossing over my right knee. My right hand's grabbing my left knee. My left hand's going back behind me and I'm rotating my whole body around to the left. I am pivoting off that left knee. This is great for your back, your hips, your chest. You're opening up the left shoulder. Neck, range of motion. Wow. All right, we're gonna go right into a cobbler stretch. So if you're seated, I want your feet far apart. I want you to bend and touch the floor. People on the floor, put the soles of your feet together. Sit up tall, 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 tall. If you can't, you can lay back and do this. So you can lay back and let your knees fall wide. That is fine. This is when you don't try and push it down. Let gravity do it, let your own range of motion do it. This should feel good with your groin, really. Ugh. Just breathe into it because then we're gonna kind of flip over to all fours. Chair, again, you can do these in a chair. So, when you're ready, get on all fours. Chair, there is a seated cat-cow version. I will show this again, hopefully you can see my chair. But if I'm in a chair and I wanna be a mad cat, I round my back and I slouch forward. The one time you're allowed to have bad posture. A cow that needs milk, I'm sitting up really tall and squeezing my shoulders. If I'm on the floor, you guys know what to do. You're on all fours. Drop your head, drop your tail. Make a big round circle. Here, wait a minute. There we go. 
And then the old cow that needs milk, I dropped my belly and lift my head and my tail. My hands are spread apart there and they're my shoulders, not my nose. Up, cat, cow, cat. Oh, these feel extremely good to me. Now, put your toes together. Seated, I will show you a version. Get your knees apart. I'll show you from this side. Make room for the Milwaukee tumor. Sit back on your heels and drop your head. Oh. So, seated version. Hold that, breathe into that child's pose. I have people go farther apart. And then, lean forward. That's how you're gonna hold this stretch in a seated version. Now, everybody on the floor, walk your hands to the left. So if you're seated, just turn to the left a little bit. Breathe into this. Now walk your hands back to the right. So again, if I'm seated, I'm just this way. I'm looking straight down, not down, but straight down. My neck is fairly neutral. And then come back to the middle. Those on the floor walk forward and watch TV. Wow. In a chair. Just pretend like it's your good morning stretch. Get your hand up over your head. So I'm watching TV. If you can, you can bend your knees. If you get a pinch in your low back, you put those feet right back on the floor. Because we're stretching our psoas, or the filet mignon of the human body. That was a fun piece of trivia I learned. Now while here, I wanna look as far as I can over my right shoulder. No, I'm not looking down and over, I'm up and across. So I'm putting my chin on my shoulder. Then I want to go left. And let's go back right. And then left. Oh. Now the favorite part of my day. You're bridging. I'm going to give you two minutes. So if you are on your back, corpse pose as we like to call it. On your back, if you're in a chair, find a comfortable position and relax. But I tell people even corpse pose. You can lace your fingers, you can put your hands out. Whatever is comfortable for you. I need to see my clock. And start bridging. Two minutes of peace and quiet. I'm gonna disappear and then we'll be back. You've got about one more minute. We're still here. Okay, you're going to get me up close and personal. So you can slowly, slowly, slowly unmute your, or wake up. 
I've unmuted everybody. Talk to each other. I will be back here Tuesday. This is Thursday. It's kind of hard to remember what day it is. I want everyone to be healthy and well. I'm giving you homework for Tuesday. So every night before you go to bed, you have to stretch. Three stretches. Hamstrings, calves, chest. So stretching your chest, you're opening up this way before you go to bed. When I do that, and I'm pretty good at doing it every night, I sleep better. So everybody, wonderful job today.